What is up guys, in today's video we will see how we can show web pages inside our Android applications using WebView. Go to the manifest file and add permission internet. If you are going to run this app on a device which is running on Android 9 then declaring the internet permission is not enough. You will have to set uses clear text traffic to true because in Android Pie it is set to false by default and WebView requires clear text traffic so set it to true if you are going to run this app on android 9. Now go to activity main.xml file and uh, prepare the required layout. Replace the root element with relative layout and remove this text view. Now add a web view set width and height to match parent. Give this an id web view. Add a text view set width and height to wrap content. Set text to next. Set text size to 22 sp. Set align parent end to true. Set margin to 8 dp. Set text color to color accent and give this an id next. Now add one more text view. Set width and height to wrap content. Set text to back. Text size will be 22 sp. Margin will be 8 dp. And text color will be color accent. And id will be back. Now go to mainactivity.java file and have a reference to all the UI elements. We have a web view, then we have a text view which is called next and we have one more text view which is called back and as soon as the application starts we will load a URL in the web view by calling load URL function of this web view object. We will load Google website. Now if you have an application inside your mobile device which is capable of uh, handling the URL that you pass here then that application will start and this URL will be loaded inside that application instead of your web view. So how do you prevent that? Well you call the function set web view client of the web view object and then you pass a new object of web view client class. Now let's run and see how this application behaves. Now let's go back to android studio and give these text views some functionality. Set next on click listener and inside this function we will check for the condition if web view can go forward. This function returns a boolean and the true value of boolean indicates that this web view has a history in forward. So if our web view can go forward then we will call the function go forward which will load the forward history for this web view. And let's add similar functionality to our back text view. Set back on click listener and check for the condition if web view can go back. And this returns true if the web view has history in back. And if it is true, then we will call the function go back. And we will also implement on back pressed method. Press control O and search for on back pressed. Make this web view object global so that we can access it from the on back pressed method. So when back is pressed, then we will check for the condition if web view can go back. And if it can, then we will load the previous web page and then we will return from this method. Now let's run and test this. Search anything on Google. And if we press back, then this should take us to the previous page. And if we press next, then it should take us to the next page. And if we press the system back button, then it should take us back to the previous page. Let's try it. Now let's go to a website which runs javascript and see what happens. I don't know if you can read this but then here it says this app works best with javascript enabled. So how do we enable javascript for our web view? Let's go back to our android studio and enable javascript for our web view. To enable javascript you call the function webview.getsettings.setjavascript enabled to true. And let's run this again. Let's go to the same website again. And now you can see that warning has been disappeared because we have enabled JavaScript. Okay, so that's it for this video. If you like this video, then give this video a like and subscribe to the channel.